Bitcoin's alive, what you gon' do? Man, pool fees are high, high Order no, order no, order no Where does it stop? Nobody knows It's a revolution, ayy Bitcoin is the one, no substitution, ayy We should see in your glow, be it's order no revolution Welcome back to Ordinal Revolution. My name is Shizzy on this channel. We cover the entire Bitcoin Ordinal ecosystem. What is up, guys? We have an amazing show for you guys today. So we haven't done an interview with the team in a little while, so we're very excited for this one. Today we got Yellow Labs, guys. They're, they're building something amazing with AMNs for liquid, li liquidations, vault modules. Guys, this is something that I've been looking into for a really long time. It's, it's DeFi on Bitcoin. If you guys know about me, I, I'm, I've been dying for some DeFi on bitcoin and i think these guys are going to be one of the guys really pushing forward and uh this could be as as soon as may if if not sooner but we we, we are very excited for this so without further ado let's get the show started let me bring in my partner as always mr yagobi what's up buddy what's going on man what's going on man we got some DeFi on bitcoin we're talking today bro <laughs> yep, yep yep i mean um you know just looking over their website and, and digging in, you know, some, it's very, very exciting. Um, but, you know, being able to hear from, from them personally, I think what they've been building in their journey is going to be a really, really good show. So. Yeah, man, it really got me pumped up just kind of seeing all this stuff, you know, like reserve pools and automatic stabilizers and, and, and stable coin reserve pools and stuff like that. And um, potentially being on layer one Bitcoin. We're very curious if you have to bridge in and stuff like that. We're going to find out all that today. So with, I guess without further ado, let's bring it, let's bring them in. Let's bring let's in KT. KT, welcome to Order of Evolution, my friend. Hey, everyone. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Awesome, yeah, thanks man. for joining us. Thank you. So so on this show, uh, obviously, we love projects. We can't wait to dig dig into Yala, but we kind of want to know about you, KT. Uh, can you kind of tell us about yourself um, as far back as, as you possibly can? Of course, uh, let me come to my rel. So I, I, I was born and raised in Paris. Uh, parents were, are Chinese, uh, have a pretty classic education in Paris. And then um, I have a background in computer science, decided to start you know, the conventional route as a data scientist after college. And when I discovered crypto in 2017, we said, why don't we have a try? That was a boom with the ICO. And that's how I got into crypto. Uh, so wow. first as a founder, and then uh, as an operator and investor later, but happy to, to tell you more later. Awesome. So it's kind of getting your, in your, your Bitcoin journey a little bit. When was the first time you heard the word Bitcoin? Uh, 2017. I didn't know what is it. I saw a ad. Uh, I think it was near PayPal, <laughs> uh, just next to the PayPal page. And I, I started dig dig deeper into it to see what are the possibilities. And one of my friends were working in banking. Uh, they actually use the technology, so the underlying technology, uh, to do risk management, and that's how we dive deeper into it. Uh, the first project we found it was an e-commerce platform that we wrote on top of the Ethereum smart contract. Uh, so everything was Solidity, uh, learned from scratch, and uh, was very very happy with the outcome. I exited in 2018, uh, then decided to go back to the conventional realm, you know, TradFi as a P investor. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, basically it. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So, um, so basically, what, 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 like, what, what, why build here? You know, obviously, you, you talk with TradFi and you can do many things over there. Like, why build in in crypto and why build on Bitcoin? Yep. So, Bitcoin is the reserve value, so the digital gold, as many uh, like to say. Um, and I have to dive deeper into it when I was back at school. Um, so, uh, just to complete the, the whole story. Um, after my PE journey, I went to Harvard for my MBA, and we started to have those, you know, Harvard folks uh, with the Harvard Blockchain Conference going on. So we have a lot, of, a lot of speakers come in. Uh, some professors are studying in the same uh, arena, and that's why we dive into Bitcoin. So we want to see: is there any way to be programmable? Uh, is there any modularity that is possible on Bitcoin while while taking advantage of the security aspect? So that's how we start to 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 dive into it. Um, go into the weeds and eventually find something which is ordinals. Uh, inscription is a, a good uh, update on what we can do on Bitcoin. And that's why I decided to jump in <laughs> right after it. Nice. Nice. And, and you mentioned that you guys actually created like an e-commerce platform on top of Ethereum. That's very interesting because even, even like uh, from 2020, 
2021 and in the past couple of years, there hasn't been a ton of that, um, or at least it hasn't been marketed of much. Do you see the possibility of doing something that like that on Bitcoin, or do you see Bitcoin's uh, on-chain economy being different than that? Yeah, definitely. Um, the core functionality that we used was smart contract, and with the emergence of L2s and you know some of the at the VM level trying to leverage the uh, smart contract aspects from the uh, EVM compatible or equivalent protocols is definitely something that we have to look at it. Um, so. It's, in my view, it's just a matter of time rather than can we do it? So uh, when can we do it? Gotcha. Gotcha. That's that. a good answer. Yeah, that's a good answer. That's that's the answer we want to hear because that means that like innovation is inevitable. Um, it's just when that's going to come. So, um, you know, you brought up ordinals being kind of like this breakthrough innovation. Some people agree with you a lot with that. Some people that may not like inscriptions and ordinals primarily Bitcoin maxis, right? Um, they, mm -hmm. they disagree and say it's not as innovative and stuff. What, where do you see like y Yala being able to kind of fit into this like inscription environment? Are you guys using that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I like to draw a parallel. <clears throat> it's like people saying crypto is a scam, but the underlying technology is good. Um, so the parallel here is, we do something need to ex educate the, the population without uh, explaining what is behind it so that they can see the use cases. And the approach of Yala is exactly the same. Uh, so we don't, we don't mind about what people think about, you know, all the those inscriptions, et cetera, but we have to show them what we can do with the underlying technology. Um, so Yala is based on the inscription technology. So that have, you know, the modularity aspect, the programmability as well so that we can help people to actually leverage their liquidity um, that sits uh, on top of Bitcoin. So our model here is really to leverage the liquidity of Bitcoin and to bridge them to the other ecosystems without risking the, losing those underlying Bitcoins or assets because all those assets stay uh, in the Bitcoin ecosystem. That's awesome. Gotcha. So what what is Yala? What, what's the thought the thought process behind it, and what would and what, what are you guys planning on building? Yeah, of course. Um, so high level is we we see a lot of uh, untapped liquidity. So twenty one million of Bitcoin. Uh, some are still being mined, but once you hold those Bitcoin, then that's it. Either you you sell it and you transform to other coins to do DeFi, or you just just hold it and you are not immune to high price fluctuations. Uh, so what we do is we really want to benefit those users uh, to have those Bitcoin liquidity leverage so that they can be used to other ecosystems. So mainly DeFi on other ecosystems. Um, so the approach is pretty easy, seamless for users. There are only three different interfaces, um, And one of the interface is connect your Bitcoin wallet to our uh, platform will help the users to take out the stablecoin. Uh, we call it YU, uh, the Yala stablecoin. And this process is through a over collateralized protocol. So it's like a conventional Ethereum lending protocol. You stake your assets and you take some out because you have those collateral in place. Uh, second interface is let those users to find a DeFi protocol they want to use and leverage their stablecoin. So it could be on any of those EVMs, uh, compatible chains, L1, L2s, etc. And final interface is really the withdrawal interface. So as you can see, it's three steps, few clicks for the user, and then you can, they can just leverage extra yield based on their the Bitcoin they hold. Is, is that phase three? Is that on Bitcoin's native layer, or is it like you know uh, not not permissionless or not trustless? Is, is it more of like a centralized approach? Yep, so uh, I have to dive a little bit, bit uh, deeper onto the tech side, uh, so to answer your question. So what we do is we have a indexer and Oracle, which is the center of our modular infrastructure. And we introduced a black and white model to enable this uh, cross-chain modularity. Uh, and to answer your questions about, is it native to Bitcoin? Yes, uh, we are a meta protocol on top of inscriptions and everything is within the Bitcoin ecosystem. So the settlement is also on Bitcoin um, and we do not add any 
layer for, you know, that could be centralization risk, complexity risk, or sometimes people do not trust other protocols because it's not native to Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So you guys using the modules, the module system, uh, that's very similar to what Unisat's doing. We, we've, we've already participated on that, getting a kind of bridge in, and you're able to do a lot of a smart contract and DeFi stuff on, on that side of it. So um, you guys are building something um, obviously different from that, correct? But, but they're very similar? Yes. Yeah, we, I think the first, the term was first introduced last year, uh, around, so 2023. 20, uh, Unisat, Domo mentioned those, those two terms, and we adapted of course, because we, we tailored and made the black and white module to our platform. Uh, so that, that that was good education for the for the, the market. And I'm happy that you guys already learned about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we were we were very early to that. We were we were, we were very happy because <laughs> it was the first swapping that we ever seen. Right. Yeah. Which was Unisat. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it was I think it was the uh, ordinal event in uh, Singapore that that was announced. And so that was a big uh, news event. My question for you guys is, is this going to be, are you trying to make it interoperable with, with their black and white modular system? Or um, is that something down the road you're, you're, you're thinking about? What does that look like? Yep. Um, so to answer your question is yes. Uh, our keywords are one liquidity uh, to be second, to be composable. And then last is it's to be secure. Uh, so we try to have those three keywords into our product uh, and, you know, having that liquidity efficiency is really core to to our project um so we want to have this infrastructure to users uh so that they can benefit from them yeah i use interoperable interoperable because that's kind of like the non-dev term but i know you guys like <laughs> to use composable um uh because i'm so chris is like that right and and so um i i love that uh because i think you know, for, for the space, we've been kind of impatient. And I think it's a little fair that we've been that way because Unisat announced this black and white module modular system uh, should be ready by like February. And it just is not ready yet. But I think there's mm -hmm. been like builders like yourself and them in the background saying, you know what, even though we said that it would be ready earlier, we got to make sure it's done right. And so once yep. it is ready and released, and if it's composable with different meta protocols working together, I think that could probably be the best case scenario for native Bitcoin's layer to have DeFi at this point. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That that's there are so many innovation going on. And that's when I that's when that's why I entered the space in 2017 and still in the space. Uh, but you know, really excited to see what are the other partners doing. Yeah, hundred percent. So, um, just for just for me to make it completely clear, you guys are using Unisat's Mazer system, not building your own. And you guys are just building DeFi platform on there? Uh, no. So just to let me correct it. Um, yeah, we yeah, please. are using the, the, the same concept. So the white and black module is the only thing that is common. <laughs> the, under, okay. the underlying technology infrastructure are tailored to our projects. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. And like, uh, uh, just, so if I wanted to kind of like bridge from, from Yala's black and white to Unisat's black and white, is, is that something that could be possible in the future? Um, so we, we see the white and black module as a tool to bridge to other ecosystems rather than to bridge from one module to the other uh, because okay. we have different type of architecture. So uh, I'm not saying it's not possible, but it will require more work to, to have that compatibility. So you'd yeah. bridge back to layer one and then bridge over there as well. Something like that would be would be probably the best bet, right? Yeah, yeah, we will we'll stay okay. native to, to to Bitcoin. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. I think he means more of like the 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 uh, framework would be different, but yeah, yeah, the yeah. possibility would be to bridge into their ecosystem and back and forth. So, yeah, yeah I think correct. that's good as, lo as long as it could be done. Because um, at the end of the day, like these meta protocols, it's like unique, especially to like people like Shizzy and I that we dabbled in DeFi, right? Or we actually had good experience in DeFi from 2020 and 2021, and uh, meta protocols kind of seem like how the layer twos were birthed out from 2021. There's so many meta protocols on Bitcoin, and I think they're going to have to uh, bridge in and use synthetics and stuff. Well, let's actually roll back a little bit because, uh, you know, you said that you had the experience from 2017 IDO and you obviously experienced the DeFi boom in 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. it, do you see this opportunity with Bitcoin being just as you know, explosive as 2020 and 2021, 
or possibly even bigger or maybe like a, a little bit less? What's your perspective on that? Yeah, I, I do think that we now in 2024, we have a educated market. So I still remember the DeFi summer back in the days where you have to, you know, to try to yield uh, the, all those protocols that are forked from one to the other. And oh, yeah. you, you pay, we paid, we all paid ex expensive lessons, you know, <laughs> being rocked <laughs> from those protocols. Yes. So I think uh, nowadays the targeted population is well educated. And I do think we already crossed the chasm from the adoption or innovation curve. Um, and that's why we, we think that this is more explosive because pe people know where to, what to do. Expectations will be higher, especially on the quality, the innovation of the tech and the uh, sustainability and security of the tech. So founders like us will double down on the tech, will double down on test to make sure that everything we provide is safe, strong, sustainable, and user can have trust and faith into what we offer. Uh, so in a nutshell, yes, definitely stronger. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, um, I actually, um, I, I agree with that. And um, it's funny because, you know, us being, you know, covering the space, we get approached to be advisors or like, you know, uh, work with other uh, projects to, to help them mm -hmm. out. And projects that came from the EVM side in 2020, 2021, they come over here and some of them, not all of them, but their expectations are kind of skewed because they they had success in 2020 and 2021. And they, they're hearing about Bitcoin's ecosystem and ordinals and stuff being really hot. So they just think it's kind of like, okay, opportunity. But then they quickly find out that it's not the same type of easy in and out type of situation mm. over here. So is that kind of how you see it? It's like, like you said, educated more. So there's opportunity to, to do well from a monetary standpoint, but it's a smarter customer you're dealing with. Yeah, um, I do think we still have to educate a little bit. Uh, for example, when I first used Bitcoin, um, you know, waiting the 10 minutes per block is daunting for me. Um, and a similar situation where, where we had to bridge to layer twos on Ethereum and wait, you know, seven to 12 days or more to bridge it back. So sometimes it's really daunting. Uh, so we have to prove to our users that it is something that we have to bear. There are upcoming uh, innovation for to to solve and to address those bottlenecks. But you know that's something we have to to bear with it at the moment. Yeah, man. All right, let's, let's talk about Yala's team. Uh, how big is your team? And can you just kind of tell us the responsibilities of, of some of the team members? Yeah, of course. So uh, we are a team of 16, one six right now. Uh, we started back in November. Um, when we talked to founders, VCs, they told us that, yeah, well, you, you're growing pretty fast. And I think the reason behind it is we are a team of seasoned entrepreneurs and uh, ex-investors. Uh, Yala is co-founded by three different um, co-founders. I'm one of them. So Liu Bing, he is CEO. He is on the product and marketing uh, he was ex co-founder of Alchemy Pay, so the on off ramp solution. Um, and then we have the other co-founder called Vicky Fu. She is CTO, so she manages our security and tech side. Uh, she was ex uh, engineering director at Circle and she worked in the past for Microsoft and Capital One. So she definitely has all the gears needed for to protect our users from hacks. Um, and myself, uh, I am Kai Tai, co-founder and COO. So I'm on the strategy ops plus go to market and I have background in investment. I was working with Binance Labs uh, for direct investment and incubation. And we also have to deal with portfolio firms, how to help them to reach the, the next milestone, et cetera. And one last core member we have is William Remore. So he is one of the early guys at MakerDAO. Uh, so he is helping us on designing the products, risk management, because that's only what we care. Um, for the rest is roughly um, so nine tech people, seven on the uh, on the business side, and we are supported by two fabulous uh, advisors, Michael Lee, XVP of Data at Coinbase, and then we have Ethan Wang, he is founding member, uh, previous founding member and tech lead at Libra, now is founding member and uh, tech lead at Google Cloud. So you know we have all those seats ready, all those people ready to help us to build a strong project. That's amazing. That's Sounds awesome. like an all-star all lineup there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it really, you know, gave me a boost of confidence right off the bat. Whenever you said um, 
you know, the gentleman from MakerDAO, uh, because I mean, you're kind of taking that approach, right? With the you yep. stable token with the over collateral collateralized AMM. So um, that's exciting. That's definitely exciting to get that team together. Um, okay, so what's the what's the next big step for Yala? You said that uh, testing testing will begin in May or mean that in May? Yeah, correct. So we have three key milestones to hit in the coming month. Uh, first is May 24 is our beta launch. So internal testing on the test environment. Then in June, we have our public testnet with a whitelist. So we'll in, uh, help all those users community and engage them to test our product, to provide feedback. And then the mainnet V1 is September 24. So we'll do have another update for V2 that we that is planned for uh, January 25. So that is the uh, next very busy six months to go. <laughs> That's awesome. Can you talk a little bit about the Yala USD? And it, how similar is it to MakerDAO and Dai? Yeah, it's actually very similar. The the process and mechanism is uh, pretty much one to one uh, the same. The only difference we have is we introduce a insurance module. Uh, I mentioned that the block of Bitcoin is every ten minutes, so fluctuation happens, and we could have a drop in prices. So before people. Uh, who may want to over collateralize, we offer that option and they can buy for insurance. And it's like a, a pool where, where people can provide liquidity. And of course, they are rewarded by fees. Uh, and the higher the volatility, the higher the APY. So that's how we see it. That's how we try to uh, reward the market participants. Yeah, man, it gets me excited, man. APY, stable coins. <laughs> it just gets me excited, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited about these modular systems because I think that, that at this point, unless there's going to be a core upgrade, that's really going to be the option, you know, for, for the on-chain economy, which that's the best thing that Wordles brought, in my opinion, was the on-chain econ economy volume. And that opened eyes and said, hey, opportunity here. Now we have modular systems and stuff. So... Uh, you mentioned, you know, September being one of your milestones, right? Um, and that seems, you know, from from the ordinal space and crypto in general, time is skewed, right? Like one month seems like six months and six months seems like two years, right? So like when you say out to September, someone that might be listening to this might be like, wow, that's way down the line. But in actuality, it might not be because it's, you know, from a strategic standpoint, you guys might have researched the market as well. Obviously you have, cause you know, that's what smart business owners do. What are you guys seeing for like, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of peak of this bull run, do you guys see it like the opportunity being like later in this year or 2025 is really that opportunity year? Yeah. As a tech background and engineering background, I like to rely on data. Um, so when you see the past few cycles, uh, usually the market start to pick up after the uh, the halving. Halving is in less than a month, so uh, around that. Okay, so if you add two quarters after the halving, it, which leads us around October 25, September, October. So that would be a perfect timing for this more, the beginning of this bull market. Um, and to give you same, when we rely on those data points, uh, usually uh, the new all-time high is 3 to 3.5x. Uh, for the for the Bitcoin, I'm talking about Bitcoin. So new all time high would be you know three to three three point five uh, of that of the previous all time high. So that would be maybe one of the key indicators for our user to see where the the, more, the bull market is heading. And we all know that this bull market would be a little bit different because of institutions come in. We have the ETF Bitcoin ETF being approved in January this year, and we have so many interests from institutions to embrace crypto or blockchain in general. So I am very looking forward to seeing what's new, how long, hopefully it's a stronger and longer bull market, but no one knows what's happening next. Uh, 3X, man, you're not bullish enough, man. <laughs> I see a 10X for the all time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> very conservative, yeah. <laughs> very conservative, very conservative. Yeah. But, on hey, our show, I, I've been saying super cycle uh, about that, but good, Yago. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, two hundred forty-five thousand is not too bad. So if that's yeah, conservative, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take that. Enough. Yeah, but um, <laughs> that was a great point that you brought up about the institutions and this cycle being different. Because I'm hearing that from some pretty educated people in the Bitcoin space, um, they're saying this this cycle is more focused on Bitcoin, obviously, because the ETFs and stuff. 
Do you see that affecting DeFi in a negative way? Because it is more institutions that like to take less risk. But um, at the end of the day, greed is greed, right? And so it could definitely flow back to DeFi. What's your uh, perspective on that? Yeah, at first sight, when you see, when you hear institution going in the market, uh, some people may say it's less liquidity on the market because, you know, when you offer ETF, then you have to buy those assets and to hold them. Um, and people, the first reaction is on oh, no, the less liquidity on the market because uh, they are somewhere in wallets from the, those institutions participation. Um, and that's how we see, we see actually a silver lining for us. Uh, we, we try one of our go to market strategies is to partner with institutions. And we also partner with, you know, the custodians that are institutional grade. As a result, we might need to help them to leverage those highly dormant Bitcoin or other assets. And that would be the perfect go to market because they have huge liquidity. They have huge appetite for uh, return on investment so that retail investors can participate. And we, we would be sort of the supporting uh, external factors that will help them to reach the, the next milestone. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's a good, great answer, though, because it's like you're looking at the opportunity there to service these institutions. And for me, I was thinking, you know, retail might not be as involved. I, I think it won't be as crazy, crazy meme everything whenever like we're like in the heat of it. There will be that meme stuff. We've seen it, but maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe it's different because yeah. I'm also seeing <laughs> other like uh, providers like yourself look to kind of do B2B a little bit kind of behind the scenes mm. type of. So we'll see what happens, though. It'll be very yes. interesting to see. Yeah, man. I, I want to have a couple questions about, about this here. I'm not sure how techy you want to get with this, but it seems pretty cool. Um, indexer, indexer, in, indexer. It looks like they're all flowing from node one into the indexer, node two in the indexer, and then out to node three. Could you explain this a little bit? But, I mean, obviously, you can kind of get, uh, get a crazy techie, but from like a uh, sim simple form. Yeah, yeah, simple form. Uh, okay, high level. So usually the indexer um, is helping you to query those data points. And indexer is has another role on Bitcoin. So it is act as a gatekeeper for us. So it will tailor and give or so grant or refuse access to all the transactions ongoing. Um, and then you have Oracle is on the execution layer where you have to, to fetch the price, the real price. And I would say it's very core to Bitcoin because nowadays there are no uh, decentralized on-chain indexer or Oracle. So we ha you, you can see on the screen here that we are building those Oracle and indexer. Uh, we're trying to make it open source eventually as an SDK so that it could be a standard for any new builders to come to the space and have something ready. Um, so that is the high level of it. Um, uh, if you want to dive deeper into the tech, I'm happy to. Yeah, yeah. I'm... Well, I mean, like there isn't a current Oracle that is is uh, doing much on Bitcoin native layer right now to to because there's not really the stacks use an Oracle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They they, yes. they have their own. Okay. Yeah, I would say um, we are a lot of those partners are building something similar, um, and one of the the key leaders in the space is trying to offer a federated, um, you know, having all those indexes working together to validate, approve, etc. Um, so that is something we try to push forward together as a team, so that we can adopt as, as a unique uh, standard for everyone. Gotcha. Awesome. So, 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 do you basically do you see the future having like one uh, dominating oracle, kind of like how Chainlink is with the EVM side? Is that, is that what yeah, you see? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's It might not be the same case where one um, key player will just, as you said, dominate the market. One, yeah. But we, I prefer to use um, you know collaboration and yeah. to push for unique standard. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be really good, yeah. I think, for this space. So it, awesome. it sounds like you guys are kind of building the foundation for other builders to build upon. Am, am I, am I yeah. correct with that? OK. Yeah, and, that, you, that would be the eventual goal final goal gotcha do you, yeah. you have any any builders reaching out to kind of build on yala as, as of now and any teams that are just kind of doing the research right now yeah i would say uh if you look at the roadmap our first priority is really building the indexer and the oracle and we also yeah. have the lending protocol so 
I'll say it's this part is part of our core product and we need that part so that we can achieve modularity or if you want yeah. uh, to, to call it composability. Uh, so uh, all those, I don't, I wouldn't, I would not name any project, but they have, we do have some project trying to see whether they can use it uh, or test it. And that's something we are, we plan to do on the test net. Yeah. Gotcha. It, it's kind of, it's kind of like a, if you build it, they will come type of situation. Cause once it's built yep. out and they see the framework is something suitable for them, they'll, they'll naturally come over and start yep. building. But um, I, I'm going to ask you a question that you might not love to answer or talk about. <laughs> it's not too, too hard. Go but ahead. It's, uh, okay. So, uh, you know, projects don't love to talk about like governance tokens or anything like that. But uh, is there one that you guys have planned for this? Cause you obviously have the stable side. And if you are kind of mimicking uh, MakerDAO, then you would have something that's similar to the maker token. Is that something you have planned? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that that's a great question. And we I love personally this question. We do think the strength of the community uh, and we want to, to involve the community into our project. So the project will transition in 25 to a DAO governance. So that is exactly the goal of this project. We'll start being a team of 16 or more people uh, having that solid fundamentals, uh, and then we'll transition in 25 to governance and holding the governance token is also a way to participate into key decisions in the future. Wow. Perfect. I'm excited. That is very interesting. <laughs> um, uh, let's just say everything goes well. Uh, you guys are up. Let's just say you guys are up and running in June, July. Um, when, when would your TGE event take place? Would that be before or after uh, you guys are up? Yep, we, we're planning to do it in Q3 this year. So Q3 of September, you know, we we, we have also to to uh, to talk to other exchanges uh, to make sure of the date. So stay tuned for the exact date. We'll announce it on our social media accounts. That That's amazing. That's awesome. I kind of want to get into another uh, question and you feel free not to answer because a lot of people don't but like, um, like <laughs> let's, just, let's just talk about like the backing, right? So a, a lot of these big exchanges, we're hearing a lot of people now, like a lot of VCs, right? We're in, we're in, yep. so we, we're kind of getting out of, out of the, the meme game. We're kind of getting in the, the IDO structure of the cycle. If we repeat what Ethereum did on Bitcoin, it went from kind of like memes to IDO to DeFi. And I feel like we're in the IDO part of it. And the IDO part of it has a lot to do with VCs. Could you talk about a little yep. bit about who's who's backing you guys? Sure. So from November to now, we haven't raised any money. So we are investing our own money to support the development of the project. Um, it's a good question because we started to fundraise last week, so it's pretty new. Uh, and what we see, what we see is uh, finding key partners. So VC is not necessarily the one bringing you financial resources, but we also need them to do connection have feedback on the product, you know, having that good feedback look is essential to any successful project. Uh, so we chatted, we started to engage com uh, conversation with, I think it's more than 40 VCs right now. Uh, and then we'll, we'll be very excited to announce, but you know, you have some NDAs to respect. So uh, yes. we'll announce in our social accounts as well. That's that's amazing. Yeah, we're we're actually doing like we're hearing a lot of a lot of names like constantly with different projects of these people and these people. So we we uh, you know we're doing our due diligence and reaching not reaching out, but we're we're taking a look at a lot of the VCs and seeing. And yeah. once you start digging into some of the VCs, you're like, oh wow, they're in this project and this project and this project. And then you, you mm -hmm. see, look at another VC and they're in this project and this project. It seems like a lot of the VCs are in like <laughs> almost every project, which is which is you know it really makes me bullish on 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 like a lot of stuff and a lot of people used to say like vcs are bearish yeah. but but you're right though because the vcs don't aren't always about the money it's just about who can they they match you with and if they're already working with somebody they say mm -hmm. oh why don't you guys use use yala labs or like hey let's introduce you guys to be perfect to work together and that type of connections actually probably do more for a project than actually the dollars if, especially if you're able to back yourself yeah 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 exactly if i if i were to take my to take back my investor hat then I would, I would look at what are the missing gap into our portfolio. And I will ask myself, is it easier to ask our portfolio firms to build a certain products or is it better that we support a novel team with strong backing? So that's usually the two routes we go. And um, the latter was most of the time the answer. So we look for, we hunt good founders so that we can help the whole ecosystem 
to return and good positive impact. Wow. Yeah, man. And you guys are a lot bigger than than I thought. Uh, 16 people, <laughs> you guys are funding yourself. Wow, you guys definitely pat yourself on the back because that's something that you don't really see a lot. You guys aren't asking for, you know, your TGE is, is until September. It basically means you guys are doing really well and doing really good for yourself. So definitely pat yourself on the back with that. That's very rare to see, especially from our chairs. You know what I mean? We see a lot of people that yeah. are out with their hands out right away. So that's pretty <laughs> amazing. Yeah, yeah that, that's one of the messages we're trying to convey to the community. Uh, we are here to build something meaningful that will have a great impact to the community and the ecosystem. Um, so that's why it's, but you know, all those, all those founders are working hard and we're trying to show the example that we are making something good, uh, something trustworthy so that we can invite them to try our platform later. Yeah, definitely can tell that you guys are very particular and, and, uh, you know, taking your time, which I think is, you know, like Shizzy said, right. There was a lot of people trying to rush to market, you know, because they want to be first and stuff. And sometimes that, that, that helps, but sometimes it, it doesn't, you know, and I think in a case yeah. like yours to where you guys aren't necessarily like the side chain or the L2 that you're trying to create, you have a little bit more uh, leeway to be able to do this and take this approach. And I think it was very smart that you guys did this because we wanted you on the show. I want to say two months ago or a month and a half <laughs> ago, you. but now we realize that, you know, it wasn't time, you know, and now you guys yeah. are getting into that next flow of the next step. So uh, right. I'm excited. Yeah. And Perfect especially timing. with, yeah, I agree um, it, with Uniset. Um, it's kind of like, it was a kind of the worst case scenario with them. They put out their black module and people are trapped inside. We have friends who are who have their tokens still kind of trapped inside. Um, what like what what are your plans for your black module? Do you plan on having the white module out right away? Um, the only difference we have is we do not convert our black module into a white module. I think that's the the core for Unisat. Um, our our thesis on the black module is we can use and create a black module on any destination destination chain. So let's say we we want we have users that want to leverage you know a, a L2 because DeFi protocol have high APY, then we will build this black module on this L2. We our lending protocol will be done through that black module, and then the uh, the whole sync process will be through our white module, which is our vote. Uh, everything is happening on the black module, including smart contract uh, liquidation, etc. And then funds are taken back once the information is synced. Oh, okay. So that's how you guys are different. That's awesome. Mm. Amen. Yeah, man. Any last any last questions, Yago? You good? Yeah, I think he covered. He did a great job. We appreciate yeah. you, uh, KT, just really educating you know the audience in the ordinal space and Bitcoin ecosystem. Because I think you did an excellent job today. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, th thank you for those amazing questions. No hard questions at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a really good job. You could kind of really broke it down and explained yourself. So that's really amazing. Um, so basically, as part of the show, we kind of give you the stage. Uh, you can kind of talk to our community, um, like let everyone know where they come find you or whatever. The, the stage is yours. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Um, so next key date, uh, I say, if you were to remember one, it would be June 24th. Uh, so June 24 is where we try to engage everyone from the community users. We have a very incentivized airdrop campaign, quest campaign, so that we can have feedback from our product. Uh, this, this is also where we have a lot of KOLs, you know, key opinion leaders supporting the product and going out, uh, you know, either online events like that or uh, in-person conferences. So feel free to come to us if you if we are going to any in-person events. We are very active on Telegram, Discord, and and um, uh, X or Twitter. So feel free to follow us. Uh, and the website is yala.org. You have everything you need, doc uh, explanations, use cases. So uh, thanks again for for having me today. That was great to to share everything with you. That's awesome. Thank you so much, KT. Right. Thank you. We'll talk See to you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was fun, dude. I, I like KT. 
I, I like y'all lives, man. I learned a, I learned a lot in there. Like I said, I, I was I, I was searching these guys up two months ago, and I was like, oh my god, like, what is this? You know what I mean? And and now we finally had them on the show, and it was everything I thought and more. Especially when you ma- you name me Maker Dow and all and all that stuff and the governance token. I'm excited. I'm definitely excited. yeah. No, I mean um, you're absolutely right. Um, if the, if this modular system is something that's going to be the native Bitcoin kind of DeFi system and framework. They're going to be a big, big part of that. Um, you know, um, they have the the stable token, the governance token. They have the DeFi tools, all that stuff that's going to be ready. And I think they have a really good, uh, you know, f- face for comms and stuff with KT. You know, he's able yeah. to break down everything uh, in a high level, simplified versions for people to be able to digest. That's very important. Um, and so I'm excited to see what they have. Um, I'm excited for the fall for them in 2025. So yeah, man. And all you VCs out there, this might be something for you guys to check out. Get your hands dirty with these guys. I do your due diligence as always, but I highly recommend uh, all our VC friends to kind of start looking into these guys because they are so very under the radar. And now I'm shocked. I don't know why. Yeah. Like, well, they, it's, I don't, it's behind, kind of behind the scenes when and well organized. You know, taking their time, being yeah. very part, you know uh, intentional. Yep. I think those are very good signs of like making Success. when the product is ready it's going to be ready right so yep bullish on yala bullish on kt and uh bullish on DeFi on bitcoin man yep. any last words Same. no just uh be ready we haven't seen anything yet orange tsunami is coming and that's all i'll say see you guys peace <laughs>